الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد أعظم الله وجوننا ووجوركم بمصابنا أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب عليه الصلاة والسلام سيسيس امبرادرس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I would like to take this opportunity to first uh, uh, and foremost thank Ayatollah Madadi uh, for uh, giving his precious time, uh, valuable time, uh, sitting with us discussing about the merits of Laylatul Qad. I would also take this opportunity to thank Brother Mustafa and the team uh, who has successfully organized uh, this meeting. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of them in abundance, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, so the format of the program is we would be uh, discussing uh, merits of Laylatul Qadr with Ayatollah Madadi for uh, almost one hour. Uh, his lecture would be in Persian. I will be translating um, uh, in bits and chunks. Uh, soon after that, we would have a short uh, Q&A session with Ayatollah Madadi as well. So before we proceed, I would like to introduce Ayatollah Madadi uh, with the slides which I have prepared over here. So... Ayatollah Madadi uh, His full name is Ayatollah Sayyid Ahmad Al-Madadi Al-Musavi He was born in Najaf in 1951 He comes from an excellent uh, lineage Ayatollah Madadi uh, from his uh, maternal side uh, He comes from the family of Sayyid Abul Hassan Al-Isfahani He was very close to Ayatollah Bujnurdi uh, Who wrote extensively on Al-Qawad al his grandfather was Sayyid Ali Madadi, uh, a great scholar, again, uh, both in Najaf and Qum. Uh, in 1956, Ayatollah Madadi from Najaf migrated to Qum, where he studied for a couple of years in uh, Mashhad before he came back to Najaf in 1969 for higher studies. Then he was with uh, great scholars um, in, in Najaf, uh, where he was uh, very much affiliated, very close to, to uh, Grand Ayatollahs and Marajas of the time. Uh, in 1979, uh, from Najaf, he migrates to Qum. And since then, it has been almost um, for more than 40 years, he is engaged in uh, teaching and lecturing uh, advanced level of Hosea studies, uh, which we call it Bahth al-Kharij, in uh, Qum, both in Persian and Arabic. When it comes to his expertise, Ayatollah Madadi um, has expertise in a variety of fields. Uh, he has lectured on Quran and Hadith extensively. Uh, when it comes to the discussions of, of uh, Rijal and Faris, Ayatollah Madadi is uh, one of the great scholars and probably, arguably, um, one of the two greatest scholars on Ilmu Rijal and Faris in today's uh, world. Uh, when it comes to fiqh, his lectures on uh, fiqh and bath al-kharij of fiqh is uh, quite popular in Qum. Uh, um, the unique approach he takes is about intellectual history, where he dissects the discussions of usul and fiqh, and as well as Quran and Hadith and Rajal. He comes from uh, that um, historical background, and he gives uh, the glimpses and insights into historical backgrounds of all these uh, discussions. His usul uh, lectures, usul uh, means uh, jurisprudence or legal theory, as we call it in English. His lectures of usul are uh, quite popular in Qum as well. Atullah Madari has a unique interest in Islamic medicines, or sometimes uh, we call it traditional medicine. Um, and and uh, most, most of his students, or like those people who are familiar with him in Qum, are aware of his uh, great interest in this field as well, and about poetry and Arabic literature, and so on and so forth. Uh, about his teaching and students, uh, he uh, has uh, separate uh, lectures on fiqh and usul on a daily basis. But apart from that, uh, he has other lectures which he holds in his house with um, those uh, students who are at the highest level of Hosea studies. His uh, Wednesday lectures are quite popular. As you could see, this is the basement of his house where he, he, he still continue uh, lecturing over here on uh, different topics. Um, apart from this, public engagement, uh, he holds uh, weekly meetings uh, with uh, people as well as community leaders, and he engages in welfare activities 
uh, as well. And um, his engagement with, with public is um, very much evident by his uh, Friday sessions where he sits in his office after the Anudba, uh, discussing with people Friday being a holiday in home uh, in, 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 in home and, and he engages with uh, a variety of people coming from different ethnicities and background in, um, in, in, in home. So that's uh, in a nutshell of um, uh, concerning uh, the, the short biography concerning Ayatollah Madhadi. We are very much honored to have him with us over here to listen to him uh, about the topic of merits uh, of Laylatul Qad. So without, without further ado, I would like to welcome Ayatollah Madhadi. Uh, as I said, the format would be he would be discussing in Persian. I would be translating that in chunks. Uh, so it would be uh, five minutes of his speech, five or less, and then I would be translating and that would continue for 50 to 60 minutes. And then uh, we would uh, proceed for uh, Q&A session, inshallah ta'ala. Um, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum jamian wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa tahiyyatu wa rizwana. آجو خدمتون عرض تشکر داریم با بود این که وقت گیران باهیتون در اختیار ما گذاشتید شیان شمال آمریکا، کانادا، آمریکا، انگلیسان، دوستان از هندوستان همه الان وصلن که از فرماشتون راجع به لیلت القد و راجع به شب های قد از شما یاد بگیرن حاجگاه جلسه من حدودا یک ساعت خواهد بود و بعد از اونم نیم ساعت انشاءالله تعالی به پرسش و پاسخ هم اختصاص خواهیم دار انشاءالله تعالی بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمدلله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا رسول الله و آله الطیبین الطاهرین المعصومین بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن المهدي صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه الطاهرين في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا أنت تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طبيلا وتجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره با تشکر فراوان از حضرت عالی و بقیه عزیزان و تسلیت این لیالی که فوق العاده مصیبتش بزرگ همینطور که در اون روایت معروف تهدمت و الله ارکان الهدا شهادت امیر المؤمنین ضربت خوردن امیر و شهادت ایشان انشاءالله خداوند متعال به انایت خاصه خودش همه عزیزان رو مشمول التاف خاصه خودش بفرمایید. راجع به لیلت القدر که به احتمال بسیار قوی فردا شب و شب پنجشنبه یعنی 23 سوم بیشترین احتمال بین این دو شب شب 21 و شب 23 سوم صحبت هم خیلی طولانی است و هم خیلی به اصطلاح با عظمت و خصائصی برای این شب هست که به عقول عادی بشر نمیاد من مجبورم فعلا به عنوان فهرست اینها رو به اصطلاح به عنوان نکته ارز کنم این ترجمه کنم بله تشکر حاجو ات المدد بیگن ویت دی ریسیتیشن اف دو ای فرج از ول از تانکینگ اول دی پارتیسیپنٹس اند اند دی اورگانایزرز He says, uh, these nights we are commemorating the martyrdom of our beloved master, Imam Ali alayhi salatu wa salam, uh, for whom it is mentioned, the Madarkanul Huda, like the pillars of, uh, of, of the guidance uh, uh, has been struck in, in this uh, night. Uh, and, and we are grieved and, and sorrowful in these uh, nights. As far as uh, the night of destiny, the night of Qadr is concerned, um, there, are, there are various opinions. The most uh, famous one is um, on the 21st night or 23rd night. So we are preparing for these uh, nights of, of Qadr and it would be a good opportunity to discuss on this topic. He says, that um, uh, human intellect would not be able to comprehend um, the reality of Laylatul Qadr. It's so high, 
in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, we, would, we won't be able to do proper justice to explain it or to understand it. But in this uh, short time, I would like to discuss as much as we can. Before my Dajjal. خداوند متعال درباره نکته اول ارز کنم خداوند متعال درباره شهرها ماهای قمری میفرماید ان عدت شهور اند الله اثنا عشر شهر مجموعه ماهای قمری دوازده ماه در پیش الله پیش خدا این نکته به خاطر این جهته که اصولا آنچه که بشر در علم خودش میدونه ماهای قمری تأثیر گذار نیستن خیلی یعنی تابع اون وجود مقدار نور ماه و بعد و قرب ماه از زمین و اثرات ماه و نور ماه بر روی زمین خیلی کمه بیشترین اثرات به خاطر خورشید و حرکت زمین دور خورشیده و لذا در اصطلاح علوم هیئت نجوم این علوم مربوطه سال قمری رو سال حقیقی نمیدن یعنی میگن ممکنه شما یک سال رو ده ماه قرار بدید یا نه ماه یا بیس ماه در اینجا در آیه مبارکه قرآن از اون اول تصریح میکنه که عدد ماه های قمری دوازده تاست و که چون خداوند متعال میداند که بشر اصطولا قابلیت درک این معنا رو نداره یعنی وارد بحث نمیشه با بشر این تعبیر اندالله پیش خدا تا گفت پیش الله یعنی عقول بشری اون رو درک نمیکنه. از این یه مرز اول بین علم و بین وحی علم درک نمیکنه که ماهای قمری تأثیر فراوان دارن و یا یک سال قمری فقط دوازده ماه اما وحی میگه نه ماهای قمری تأثیر دارن ماه رجب یک آثار داره ماه شعبان یک آثار داره ماه رمضان یک آثار داره و اینها عددشون دوازده پس این مرز بین علم و وحی علم قبول نمی کنه این قسمت رو و این از خصائص وحی و خداوند با این تعبیر تا فرمود اندالله یعنی این از نکاتی است که بشر با علم چون بشر رو خدا خلق کرده عقل رو خدا به او داده علم رو خدا زمین هاش فراهم کرده و خدا میفرماید و ما اوتیتون من العلم الا قلیلا شما مقدار کمی از علم به شما این رو نمیتوانید درک بکنید درک عظمت ماهای قمری با عقل بشری و با علم بشری نمیشه عبدالله مددی بگنس دسکوس لیلت القادر by reciting this verse from the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Uddat Tashur in the Allah Ithna Asha Shahra. So the months of um, in the eyes of Allah are 12 months. So he's, he's uh, inviting us, he's encouraging us to focus on the word in the Allah, the phrase in the Allah, in the eyes of Allah, for Allah. So he says, uh, we need to make distinction between uh, wahi and ilm, so revelation and, and science. Uh, this distinction is important uh, due to the fact that uh, lunar months would not necessarily have significance for human beings because human beings uh, would like to focus more on solar uh, calendar and solar months because of our various activities would depend upon solar activities. And as far as uh, science is concerned, and they got it right, that solar uh, calendar is something which has a direct effect on our lives in terms of agriculture, in terms of crops, and, and uh, in terms of weather, and so on and so forth. Um, however, we need to keep this in mind, as uh, scientists allude to, that um, the, the, the nur and the light of moon is not its own light. It derives its light, it, it, it gets its light from the sun. So solar months and solar calendars are the important calendars for our day-to-day -day life. However, lunar calendars are important. The new lunar calendar is important from the perspective of this verse in which Allah SWT mentions, in the, Allah, in the eyes of Allah, there are 12 months. So by the fact um, and, and by the qualification of this word, in the Allah, in front of Allah, in the eyes of Allah or for Allah, Allah SWT is hinting this 
that human beings would not necessarily comprehend the importance and the significance of lunar months. As, as he said, like, you know, solar months are something which human beings would be able to comprehend. As far as lunar months are concerned, they won't be. And for that reason, the verse says, in the Allah, for Allah, in the eyes of Allah. So, Atul um, Madari explains um, uh, the, the merit of the month of Rajab, the merit of month of Shaaban, the merit of the month of Ramadan. So, all these merits and the significance and the importance of all these lunar months are something which we ought to learn from um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the religion, because scientists won't be able to help in this uh, particular uh, aspect. And for that reason, um, we have to bow our heads down in humility that uh, this is something which uh, common intellect and human intellect would not necessarily be able to uh, comprehend. This is how Quran uh, mentions, Mama uti tu min il, uh, that we haven't given you um, about ilm, uh, but very less. So what we know is 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 far less than what um, what we don't know is far less than uh, what we know. Before my dajjal. Okay, the second one is that in the Quran, not Farmud, Sal Qamari, Farmud, Eddat Shuhur, that is, Mahay Qamari. از این آیه مبارکه این طور معلوم میشه که مجموعه دوازده ماه یعنی ماهای قمری دوازده 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 هر دوازده ماه جداست دوازده ماه دوازده وقتی این سر این مطلب که چرا دوازده ماه جدا شده از مجموعه آیات و بعضی روایت تفسیری این در میاد وجود لیلت و قدر یعنی در هر دوازده ماه یک لیلت و قدر وجود داره این لیلت القدر به منزله قلب اون ماه هاست. اون شب ها و اون روز ها رو این سال رو به هم ربط میده این لیلت القدر یک خصیصه ای داره که مثل قلب میمونه در یک رواد داره که قلب ماه رمزان ماه رمزان هم داره اول سال در حقیقت شب قدر این لیلت القدر این خصوصیت رو داره که این دوازده ماه رو به هم دیگه رفت میده این نقطه دوم اختلاف علم با وحیه چون علم شب خاصی رو در سال نمیبینه اما وحی این رو تشخیص داده که یک شب خاصی در سال وجود داره که این شب خاص این دوازده ماه رو به هم رفت میده Atul Amadidi mentioned in the second point um, concerning this verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Iddah to Shur. Iddah to Shur explains uh, the number of um, the months. So number of, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this one, number of months, he says like number of months are like 12, 12, 12. We need to understand how this lunar calendar works uh, is that all these 12 months are separate entities. So every 12 months are separate entities. And uh, the way to understand this is uh, because of the existence of Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr is the one which connects one year to the second year, the first 12 months to the second 12 months to the third 12 months. So uh, the common denominator for all these uh, months, or all these 12 months is, um, or I should say, are a Laylatul Qadr. In, in certain uh, narration, it has been reported that Laylatul Qadr is the heart of the year. Uh, again, um, the function of heart is to pump. So the old 12 months are pumped by um, the existence of uh, Laylatul Qadr. Um, uh, and then um, in, in certain um, uh, reports, it is mentioned uh, that Laylatul Qadr, the night of destiny, is the heart of uh, the month. And in, in certain uh, other reports, it's mentioned that the month of Ramadan is the first month of, uh, of, of uh, the calendar. Uh, obviously, not the way how we calculate, but in essence, how Atul Madadi wants us to understand about uh, the, 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 the main purpose and objective of Allah mentioning this at 12 months and the connectivity of these 12 months through Laylatul Qadr. Before that, Joe. Yek Surah Dar Quran, Benam Qadr. نامگذاری شده 
نکته سوم ما آیه اول این سوره است بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم انا انزلناه فی لیلت قدر خداوند متعال میفرماین ما قرآن رو در شب قدر نازل کرد اصولا خود قرآن راجع به قرآن آیات فراوانی داره اون چی که الان ما فعلا چون وقت ما خیلی کمه یه آیه رو فقط متعرض میشم از کردم این بحث ها خیلی طولانی در سوره مبارک الرحمن این طور میخونه الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الانس ظاهر این آیه مبارک این است که حقایق قرآنی مظهر رحمانیت حضرت حق اصطلاحا الله اخفا و و به اعمق اسماء الهی است بعد از الله رحمان یعنی قرآن مظهر رحمانیت حضرت حق و ظاهرش هم این است که خلقت انسان بعد از تعلیم قرآن الرحمان علم القرآن خلق الانسان به قلب فرمودی اون وقت این معناش این است که قرآن و حقایق قرآنی و مفاهیم قرآنی در یک درجه فوق العاده بالا هستند اون چیزی که به عنوان حقایق قرآنی است یک درجه بسیار بالا ارز کردم فعلا نمیتونم شرح این مقامات رو ارز کنم اجمالا اون وقت خداوند میخوان بفرماید که در شب قدر اون مفاهمی مفاهیم فوق العاده بالا فوق العاده عالی نه فقط مفاهیم اون حقایق وجودی که فوق العاده بالا است و مظهر رحمانیت حضرت حق است اینها تنزل پیدا کرد تنزل پیدا کرد آمد پایین تا به حدی که به زبان عربی گفته شد و همه افراد حتی بچه دو ساله هم میتونه اون رو بگه مثلا الحمدلله رب العالمین الرحمن صدا نمیرسه اون مفاهیم عالی اون حقایق عالی اینقدر تنزل پیدا کرد که در لباس لغت عربی شد و قابل تلفظ برای همه افراد حتی بچه دو ساله الحمدلله رب العالمین الرحمن این مثل این میونه که یک مطالب علمی در یک علمی باشه فوق العاده دقیق باشه یک نفری که استاد بزرگی است پروفسور بزرگی است بتواند اون مطالب رو به خیلی لغت ساده به اندازه یک کتاب دبیرستانی شرح بده بست بده به تعبیر متعارف تنزل بده لذا در این آیه مبارک در عظمت شب قدر همین بس که در طول سال این یک شب قدر این صلاحیت رو داشت که اون قرآن از اونجا بیاد به درجه زبان تصور بکنین چه عظمتی است خداوند متعال برای شب قدر قرار داده که در طول سال سال قمری 354 روز در طول سال فقط در این شب قدر این صلاحیت بود که اون حقایق عالی که عرض کردیم که فوق تصوره اونا بیاد اینقدر پایین و تنزل پیدا بکنه تا به زبان عربی و در اختیار همه الان همه انسان ها از همه نجاد ها هندی باشن انگلیسی باشن ژاپنی باشن چی بتوانن اون رو به اصلا تلفظ کنن بتونن اون رو قرائت کنن بتونن رو بخونن um, in, in the third section of his discourse uh, Adullah Madadi mentions that after we have understood um, the words uh, concerning uh, the 12 months and, and, and the significance of lunar calendar in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions uh, in reference to Shabai Qad and Laylatul Qad, uh, we should be focusing on this verse uh, of, of uh, uh, Surah Al Qad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna anzallahu fi Laylatul Qad. We have revealed Quran in um, the night of Laylatul Qadr. So uh, he's explaining what is the significance of this Laylatul Qadr. Um, he takes support uh, for explaining this um, from Surah Al-Rahman. And in, in uh, Surah Al-Rahman, we recite Al-Rahman, Allam Al-Quran, that 
Rahman and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selects the name Rahman in this uh, surah, in this uh, chapter, which is called Surah Rahman. Um, and and um, Atullah Madari mentions um, we should be focusing on the sequence, how uh, the Quran relates to this, that Rahman, the Almighty Allah, who is merciful, who is ever merciful, who is all merciful, is teaching a Quran. So Rahman and Quran, the all merciful and the revelation of Quran has uh, some kind of connection which we need to understand. He mentioned there are two uh, important names among all the names of Allah. The first one is Allah. The name Allah, the word Allah is the most hidden meaning uh, concerning God. So he says, Akhfa. Akhfa is like, you know, the most treasurous, the most hidden one. And Aamak, Aamak means it's, it's so deep that we won't be able to comprehend the nuances of um, the, the, the meanings which are associated with the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's uh, number one, as far as the word Allah is concerned. The second name, uh, which comes uh, next to the name of Allah, is uh, the, the name uh, Rahman or the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we call it Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman is um, the manifestation of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he says Surah Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahman Allam al-Quran, he is inviting us to focus on um, uh, um, the word Rahman and the revelation of, of Quran. And he, then he says uh, the realities and the meanings and the nuances of a Quran and the deep meaning which are embedded in um, within the Quran are so high on, on the supreme pedestal of, of what we can understand. So uh, he says like we need to imagine that that deepest meaning that deepest reality which Quran contains, God has revealed in this night, which is Laylatul Qadr, right? So he say, um, let's uh, focus on those realities of Quran. They were so high beyond the comprehension of human beings. First of all, it was, it came down in the form of language in Arabic. It came so down, it came so down that even a child of just two years would be able to utter and recite. He says, like, you know, a child of like two years old uh, would be able to recite Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Bismillah, Rahman. So the highest reality of Quran was diluted and it came so down that anyone could be able to, to recite in any uh, language. So, uh, that's the, the, the philosophy of, of Layla Tulkar. So he says, like, in, in as far as lunar calendar is concerned, there are 354 days. In this 354 days, Allah has chosen Layla Tulkar as the night in which those realities which are embedded um, in, in Quran were diluted to the extent it reached to us. And when it reached to us, he says, like, not only a child could utter, a non Muslim would be able to utter people from all the backgrounds, all the ethnicities, all levels of knowledge would be able to connect to this Quran. So that's the, 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 the uh, purpose of Laylatul Qadr and the significance of Laylatul Qadr. And, and let me summarize before I hand over to Ayatollah Madhidi, that the significance of Laylatul Qadr um, lies in the understanding that the utmost and the noblest and the highest peak of understanding, the highest realities of Quran were revealed and God chose this night, I mean, uh, the night of Laylatul Qad, the night of Qad, um, that this message could be transferred to human beings that everyone would be able to relate to it. Before that, Jum. Ayy Mubarak, Dilalat, Bara Azamat, in Shab Nikone, in Ghadr, این مضمون البته ما ابتداعا مثلا تصور این معنا رو نمی کنیم اما معلوم میشه که خداوند با این آیه عظمت این شب رو اینقدر بیان میکنه که بلا فاصله به پیغمبر اکرم میفرماید و ما ادراک ما لیلت و قدر خیلی عجیب خطاب خدا به پیغمبر پیغمبر تو چه میدانی شب قدر چی؟ و 
معلوم میشه آیه قبلی این عظمت این شب که قرآن نازل شده در این شب در قرآن سیزده مورد ما ادراک خطاب در رسول الله که چه میدانیم دوازده مورد شاجه به قیامت جهنم یه مورد شاجه به دنیا از کنم لیلت رو قرد In uh, reference to uh, the importance of Laylatul Qadr, Ayatollah Madadi explains uh, that uh, the, the significance of Laylatul Qadr could be gauged and understood by uh, the verse which is just following uh, Inna Anzalna of Laylatul Qadr. Because the, the, the next verse uh, suggests, wa ma it, it says, wa ma adraka ma Laylatul Qadr. As if God is, is telling to Prophet, uh, would you be able to comprehend? Uh, what Laylatul Qadr is. So it, it was so important that God, after mentioning the significance of Laylatul Qadr, he addresses to the Prophet as if he wants to make sure that Prophet does get it right. That would you be able to, do you really know what is the significance of Laylatul Qadr? Uh, he says this phrase that do you know, would you be able to comprehend? This phrase is used 13 times in Quran, 12 times um uh, it is mentioned in the context of the day of judgment there is only one verse um apart from those 12 um uh, context the 13th one is uh, mentioned in this particular verse uh, concerning laylatul qadr and this uh, explains the importance of uh, laylatul qadr the way god is addressing uh, to his prophet before we dajo لیلت القدره خیر من الف شهر یعنی همین شب به تنهایی از هزار ماه بهتره طبعا هزار ماه میشه سی هزار شبان روز و شست هزار شب و روز یعنی این شب به تنهایی از مجموعه سی هزار شب و سی هزار روز افضل و بهتره و لذا هر گونه عملی رو که انسان در این شب انجام میده قرائت قرآن، نمازهای نافله، دعا، صدقات، خیرات، افتاری دادن این به منزله این است که مثلا در هزار ماه یک شب مساویه با هزار ماه با سی هزار شب و سی هزار روز مثل یک عملی است که انسان در این مدت طولانی انجام داد Ayatollah um, Madadi mentions that um, uh, the verse uh, following um, mentions that Laylatul Qadr is um, greater and better than uh, one, the 1,000 months. Uh, and when he says 1,000 months, uh, we would be able to dissect it further, saying 1,000 months is uh, equal to 30,000 uh, nights and 30,000 days, as if God is saying, Whatever you do in this night is better than what you would do in ordinary, ordinary 30,000 nights and 30,000 days, altogether 60,000 days and nights. So whatever we do, the recitation of Quran, uh, supplementary um, uh, prayers, uh, um, uh, namaz, um, uh, various duas, uh, giving donations, charity, uh, giving iftari to someone. So all whatever good deeds uh, we do, we perform in this blessed night would be far better than uh, 60,000 days and night in ordinary days and night. بعد نکته بسیار مهم می فرماید تنزل الملائکه تو و روح ملائکه هم در این شب قدر نزول پیدا می کنن. روح هم تفسیر شده به روح القدس یک خلقی است که اعظم از ملائکه است و به اصطلاح مشرف بر اونهاست اینها به اذن رب بهم به اذن رب اصطلاحا همچنان که عرض کردم الله اخفای اسماء الهی است رب از هر اسماء الهی است چرا چون رب یعنی تربیه از شما تمام این موجودات رو که میبینین درخت حیوان آب دریا اقیانوس ها اینا همه مظهر رب هستند وقتی این معناش این است که ملائکه و روح القدس در این شب تنزل پیدا میکنند این تنزلشون یعنی میان اون چرا که مورد حاجت بشر هست اون چه که باید در این سال تقدیر بشه اون رو نگاه میکنن و مزه کلمه رب هم رو این جهت اینجا به کار برده شده که مراد اون چه که نیاز 
تمام این موجودات تا یک سال هست به لحاظ تربیت به این لحاظ ملائکه از کل امر تعبیر عجیبی است یعنی تنها شب سالی است که از تمام امور ملائکه که در اصطلاح قرآنی ملائکه مدبرات هم یعنی ملائکه که نیروهایی هستند که اداره میکنند به امر الهی و به امر ربشون موجودات عالم رو انسان رو تمام مخلوقات رو اداره تدبیر میکنند و الا خالق و رازق فقط خداست اینها نقش تدبیر کننده دارند نقش واسطه دارند اون وقت اینا از تمام امر یعنی مسئله رزق بگیریم مسئله حیات بگیریم مسئله سلامتی بگیریم مسئله ازدواج بگیریم مسئله اولاد دار تمام اموری که در زندگی انسان هست فقط در این شب هست که این ملائکه از تمام امر نازل میشن نزول پیدا میکنن مراد از نزول یعنی سنخیتی پیدا میکنن با موجودات و اونها را آماده میکنن برای یک سال اون چی که باید تقدیر الهی بشه و این تقدیر الهی هم به اختیار انسانه یعنی اینجور نیست که جبری بشیم خداوند متعال در اختیار انسان قرار داده و به اون میگه شما در امشب دعا بکنید در امشب بخواهید این شبی است که تقدیرات یک سال بر اثر تنزل ملائکه برای شما مقدر میشه عدل مددی منشنز دا فالوینگ ورس این ویچ ایت از منشن دات دا انجلز آف گاد دیسند آن دیس ارت این دیس بلسد نایت And not only um, angels, but also Ru, Tanazulul Malaikatu wa Ru. And he uh, goes on saying that this Ru is explained to us um, in exegesis uh, that this Ru is the best of the angels, who is uh, superior to other angels. Uh, so uh, this was his uh, angels and uh, Ru. rule i mean are descending in uh, this uh, blessed night uh, the, the following word which we have in this verse is bi idn rabbihim bi idn rabbihim he said the word which is used in this verse is rab so uh, focusing on the word rab the word uh, rab is manifestation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he says um, as we said earlier the word allah is akhfa is the most hidden among the names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the word allah is the most hidden um, name uh, contrary to that rab is the most manifested uh, name which is very much apparent everyone would be able to relate uh, easily with this word so allah is the most hidden one rab is the most apparent one the most uh, um, uh, the name which everyone would be able to connect uh, to it so he explains that bi idn rabbihim would be mean that god Uh, the, the word rab is the manifestation of um, uh, allah's name uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so focusing on the word rab rab means uh, one who uh, who provides sustenance uh, one who manages the affairs of uh, our uh, daily lives atul uh, madadi says um, when it comes to quran quran says uh, god has delegated uh, Now, not in the sense that God does not do it, but in the language of Quran, um, it is uh, angels who take the responsibility of managing the affairs and operating uh, the affairs of human beings. So everything due um, to the instructions of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So. these angels when they descend along with the ruhul amin when they descend on this uh, earth the word which occurs in this verse bi idn rabbihim min kulli amr so atul madidi is inviting us to focus on the word amr min kulli amr meaning for everything whatever you could think of uh, there is something which is um, which is going to be decreed in this blessed night so be nirabbi min kulli amr min kulli amr he gives examples of like you know sustenance it might be health it might be marriage it might be issues related to uh, birth uh, and and so on and so forth whatever we could think of 
everything is going to be uh, uh, decreed in uh, this uh, blessed night. So when God says that Malaika and the angels and Ruhul Amin descend in this night with the permission of Rab, who is Lord, who is sustainer, sustenance as he explains, like it, it, it relates to everything. For everything, whatever you could think of, this nuzul, this descendants is not something we should be understanding in physical realm, in physical language. No, it's not physical. He said that is something which you would be able to connect with these angels and with this decree which God is um, providing in this uh, night. So nuzul and the descendants is not in its physical sense. Rather, it is something to do with sinkhiya. Sinkhiya means we have to prepare ourselves to get uh, connected to these uh, entities as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. Uh, the last point he mentions is, he, me he mentioned over here is, that we shouldn't be thinking that then uh, when Allah decrees everything in this blessed night, means there is no free will for us. No, he says, um, uh, there is a certainly free will and our duas and our supplication, our preparation, everything would help us um, in, um, in, in writing the things which are going to be written for us in this blessed night. So uh, one should not be thinking that everything is decreed. Uh, it means uh, um, there is no free will for human beings. He says that's not what uh, we should be thinking. Rather, it is our supplications and our connections which would count in this uh, blessed night. Before that, Joe. Ano bar in shavagadr tanha shabis dar sal ke takdir hame yomur kol amr. Vachi na chon mazhar rab hastan, yani mazhar estelah rabbaniyat hazat hag hastan. Etla inha dar had hamin rububiyat. در بعضی از روایات داریم که در دعاهایی که در شب قدر مسائلی که تقدیری که شب قدر میشه معزالک در اونها بدا جا داره بدا اصطلاحا به این معناست که مثلا به حسب ظاهر وسائل طبیعی بنا بوده مطلبی اتفاق بیفته لکن خداوند متعال اون را عوض میکنه حق سبحانه و تعالی فوق تمام این هاست و الله من ورائه محیط این مراد این روایات اینه که اگر فرض کنید در شب قدر ملائکه طبق به اصطلاح شواهد عینی طبق حقایق عینی طبق حقایق خارجی مقدر شده باشه این شخص تا یک ماه دیگه مریض بشه مراد اینه لیکن اگر همین انسان دعا بخواند خداوند متعال حتی این تقدیر شب قدر را عوض میکنه سرش اینه اونجا ملائکه این تقدیر رو قرار دادن اما وقتی که انسان دعا خون همینطور که در جلسه قبل از کرد اونجا با خدا رو بروز اونجا داره که انی قریب عجیب و دعوت من جواب میدم یعنی اگر در اختیار ملائکه باشه باید مریض بشه اما اینجا خدا من میفهم من جواب میدم کسی که دعا میکنه من جواب میدم بنا نیست ملائکه جواب بدن من جواب میدم لذا اینه که این روایات خیلی لطیف این روایات که حتی اگر در شب قدر تقدیر مرض شده باشه باز هم انسان ناامید نشه دعا بکنه خداوند اون رو بر میداره ولو ملائکه این تقدیر رو انجام داده لکن اینجا چون بحث بین الله و بین ربوبیت بین ملائکه است من یه توضیح مختصر مثلا ببینیم وفات رو توفی رو خداوند در قرآن گاهی به خودش میگه الله یا توفلن گاهی به ملک الموت میگه گاهی هم ملائکه توفت هم الملائکه اما اجابت دعا رو فقط به خودش میگه دقت کنید اجابت دعا رو نه به جبرئیل میگه نه به ملائکه میگه اجابت دعا فقط خودش این معنای بداست یعنی اونهایی که دست ملائکه است درست کارشون انجام میدن لکن وقتی صحبت صحبت خدا شد دیگه اونجا ملائکه هم جبرئیل هم کاری نمیتونن بکنن چون ذات اقدس الهی خودش به عهده گرفت یکی هم در باب صدقات چون خوندم آیه مبارکه علم یعلم ان الله ببینید اونجا داره الله 
هو به یقبل و توبت ان عباده و یعخد و صدقه خدا الله یعخد و خدا صدقه رو میگیره نه ملائکه نه جبرئیل لذا در روایات داریم که ادعا یرد دل قضا ولو ابرم ابراما از صدقتو ترد دل قضا ولو ابرم ابراما Uh, Adil Madadi uh, mentions um, uh, in, in the next uh, the section of his discourse uh, about uh, the only night, uh, again, continuing on the merits of, of Laylatul Qadr and highlighting a point about like uh, the importance of supplication and um, uh, giving alms and, and charity. They mentioned the only night when everything is decreed is uh, the night of the blessed night of God, the night of destiny, the night of, of connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the word which we are focusing, he mentions, was Rab, Rububiyat, which is something to do with lordship, sustenance, operating the affairs of human beings, managing the affairs of human beings. Um, he says, although we are certain that everything is decreed, everything is written, everything is, is uh, managed and, and, and um, uh, uh, fixed in this uh, night. But at the same time, we should not uh, lose hope because there is something which is called Bada, as far as our belief is concerned. We believe in the concept of Bada. The concept of Bada goes this way. Bada is, is uh, uh, something which was apparent uh, based on, on the circumstances, apparent circumstances and evidences which are at our disposal currently. We might think that the natural conclusion of this evidence is that something is going to happen. So that's something which is going to be, which is going to occur and happen. That's from just one angle. But then there are certain things which could change this destiny, which was based on circumstantial evidence as what we, we would be thinking of. All right. So he gives example to explain it further. For example, if someone was going to uh, fell ill or uh, he was going to suffer, he or she was going to suffer from certain illness in a one month time. But if you make dua, there is going to be changed that destiny which uh, was written for you that after a month uh, you would fell ill you would be suffering from some illness that would change based on the dua which you have made so this change is something which is called uh, bada as atul madadi explains to us he says um, concerning laylatul qadr concerning the night of qadr how this would work he says as we uh, discussed earlier that the angels are those uh, servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are managing the affairs, who are writing everything for us under the supervision of God. So they might have written something for us, but then that's not the end of the story because there is always something which is going to change our destiny. And that's something which is going to change our destiny is our dua, is our supplication. So those are things which changes our... those. Those things which change our destiny are our supplications and our, our connect, connections with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why and how this work? Because of the verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Wallahu mi muhid, that Allah is over encompassing over all the affairs, right? We might not be thinking of like, you know, circumstantial evidence, rather Allah is overarching and over supervising over everything. So um, uh, that's how uh, this is, um, uh, it would work. Um, it, towards the end, Atul Madari mentions uh, that let's focus on, on the verses of Quran, like which things are associated with God and God has taken responsibilities and what other things where God uh, would uh, delegate uh, its affairs to others, obviously under his supervision. So for example, taking the soul, um, if someone is going to die, uh, there are three different verses in Quran. Sometimes um, it mentions God is responsible of taking souls of like, you know, a human being when he dies. In the other verses, it mentions Malikul Mo, the angel of death takes the life. In the third occasion, it says like, you know, general angels and the Malaika takes um, life. So in, in that context, you see, uh, God is, is, is delegating um, the duty and the responsibility of taking souls to the angels and to the malaikas or malikul mouth. But when it comes to 
accepting the dua of human beings it is the only god and allah is the only one who is going to accept our duas and and that is not delegated to angels by any means god in not a single verse mentions that you make duas and angels are going to accept it no that is exclusively right of god to accept the duas of a human beings in 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 the verse which ayatul madadi just mentions um uh, god says ujibu da'wat tadai means i am accepting it i am responsible to address and to 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 uh, accept your duas and to listen to your duas i am going to do it not the the angels that's number one and the other thing which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions is um is about the charity about the donation when you give something god is responsible to take those donations and those charities and those helping which you do for your momin brothers and sisters so these are the things which um, would affect our life so there is nothing to be uh, discouraged uh, that everything is returned means nothing is going to change rather based on the the uh, um, submission which he made uh, that uh, uh, there are something which would uh, change our destinies are our duas and our supplication which connects us directly to our god without any intervention of angels and, and malaika as you be fair man khayli mukhtasar majburim sohbat konim آخرین آیه هم سلام اونهیه شب قدر سلامه سلام یعنی سلامه لفظ سلامه در زندگی ما واضحه هر وقت یک شیء خالص باشه شیء دیگری درش نباشه فرض کنیم مثلا آب کاملا خالص باشه ولو به اندازه یک ذره کوچکی مولکول غیر آب نباشه اینو میگیم سالم وقت لفظ سلامه در قرآن و در اصطلاح اسلام دینی یک تأثیر عجیبی داره یعنی یک بعد بسیار عجیبی داره اولا خود سلام از اسماء اسماء الله در خود قرآن سلام المؤمن المهیمن اسماء الله ثانیا بیاین پایین شما وقتی میخواین به رسول الله میگین صلی الله علیک و سلم سلام این سلم از همین سلام وقتی در نماز هستین با یاد خدا با الله اکبر وارد نماز میشیم و با سلام از نماز خارج میشیم السلام علیکم و رحمت الله و بعضی از علمای اسلام گفتن شما هر عملی انجام بدین از نماز خارج میشین لیکن در فقه اهل بیت فقط با سلام مشغول غذا خوردن بشین از نماز خواب بعد از تشهد مشغول غذا خوردن بشین از نماز خارج نمیشین فقط سلام دقت کن. بعد میایید پایین تر یعنی اصلا سلام در کل جامعه اسلامی جای داره هر وقت مؤمنین به هم میرسن سلام علیکم ببینید از بالا از الله شروع شد تا به جامعه رسید اون وقت باز شما میخواین بریم بالا الا من عت الله به قلب سلیم کسی که با قلب سلیم رو به خدا میاد قلب سلیم قلبی است که درش غیر الله نباشه یعنی که ما غیر الله مثل ویروس مثل میکروب سلامت قلب رو از بین میبره بعد از کنم من یه مقدار از آیات رو میخونم چون وقت کمه بعد در بهش ادخلوها به سلام اصلا وقتی میخواد داخل بهش بشه خطابی که به او میاد ادخلوها به سلام با سلامت وارد بهش بشه یک آیه هست در سوره یاسین البته مضمونش قریبش جای دیگه هم هست اما این تعبیر فقط سوره یاسینه جای دیگه نیست سلامون قولن من رب رحیم ظاهر آیه این است که فرد که وارد بهش میشه لفظ سلام رو هم میشنوه سلام بعد آیه میفهم قولا من رب رحیم این سخن خداست یعنی انسان وقتی وارد بهش شد یکی از عجایبی که در اونجا هست لفظ سلام رو میشنوه مثلا قبل از بهشت هم سلامون هی لیلت القدر هم سلام سلامون هی تا مطلع الفجر بعد دخول در بهش بعد سلام چون واقعا تصور این معنا خیلی برای ما مشکله ما به همون تعبیر قرآنی میگیم سلام رو میشنوه قول از رب رحیم حالا قولا ظاهر آیه مبارکی اینه که این تعبیر در هیچ جای قرآن نیامده مونه. ولی ازام احتمال داده شده که یاسین که چون این روایت معروفه که یاسین قلب قرآنه میگن در یاسین نکاتی هست که در سوره مبارک یاسین جای دیگه نیست یکیشم اینه و این خیلی مقام بالایی است 
که انسان وقتی وارد بهش شد لفظ سلام رو میشنوه بعد خدا میفهم قولن این یک سخنیز گفتاریز کلامیز از خداوند مهربان پروردگار مهربان و رحیم دیگه من فکر میکنم افراد هر قد مایل باشن به بهش برن با این مطلب نیلشو بیشتر میشنوه بهش با آی شما که در لحظه ورود لفظ سلام رو از خداوند متعال بشنوه این the the remaining uh, part of his uh, submission and his uh, tafsir uh, explaining the merits of laylatul qadr ayatul madadi uh, mentioned the last words uh, in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, has revealed salamun hi hatta matul al fajr so the word salam he is encouraging and inviting us to focus on the word salam and he says like we won't be able to understand um uh, the meaning of salam uh, in its full depth he says uh, what we understand uh, from the apparent meaning of salam is uh, something to do with pure so for example if the water is not mixed with any substance we will call it, it it's a salam water salam water means it's it's pure it's it's not mixed with any sort of impurity um that that's what we understand in our day to day life but when it comes to quran when it comes to our islamic um tradition we use the word salam in a variety of contexts and and let's dissect it uh, if i recall properly at ramadan he gives eight examples where he mentioned how the word salam is used uh, quite often in our islamic tradition number one uh, salam is the name of one of the, the names and attributes of god so when he says salam salam is is uh, as quran says in one of the verses like salamun muhin so salam is one of the names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala second thing when it comes to the prophet again use the word wa sallama taslima or like you know sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama so there again the word salam is used in the context of our beloved prophet um and number 3 when it comes to our salat our namaz and towards the end how we end our namaz how we conclude our how we depart from the presence of god we depart and we conclude our salat by saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah so again the word salam is used uh he mentions like in other uh, schools of like jurisprudence uh, they may come up uh, saying uh, that one could conclude salam uh, one could c- conclude their namaz or like uh, they could end their namaz by eating or by any other thing but as far as like uh, shia fiqh is concerned we say we end with assalamu alaikum so so the word salam occurs there as well um then he mentions about uh, in our day to day life we the uh, when we meet uh, with each other when we meet we greet each other by saying salamu alaykum so again the word salam is repeated there and and how often we use uh, this a uh, word now then the next example he gives is about qalbun uh, salim man atalla bi qalbin salim that a person who would come in the presence of god on the day of judgment he has he, he is expected to come with a pure heart so qalbun salim so salim again the word salam is used in the context of heart so the heart which is pure there is the heart where you don't have sin you don't have those things which displeases a god um next he gives example of like you know the verse in which uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned udkhuluha bi salamin aminin you enter Uh, the paradise the enter jannah again with uh, salam right so again the word salam is repeated over there um next one he gives example and and probably this is the last example which he gave uh, is from surah yasin in which we uh, there is a salamun qawlan mir rabbir rahim Uh, again he says like this is the the epic of you know how this word uh, salam is used in this uh, context and he mentions in surah yasin when we recite this salamun that the word salam any person who enter the behisht any person who enter a paradise and and the jannah that person is going to listen would be able to hear the word salam so they would be greeted by the word salam but who is greeting when we would be uh, reaching to 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 the paradise when we would be uh, blessed by by entering into the paradise who is going to greet us uh, ayatullah madadi mentions from this word he says qawlam mir rabbir rahim this salam 
is the utterance, is the call from your merciful Lord. He is inviting you. He is embracing you. He is inviting you to his paradise by the word Salam. So he says like, you know, why we say Surat Yasin is the heart of, 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 of Quran because of these deeper meanings which it contains. And then Surat Yasin has lots of other deeper meanings. Uh, this is just one of those uh, which is so amazing and incredible that any person would be able to uh, be encouraged to do good deeds and enter into paradise. And, 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 and jokingly mentions like, you know, after uh, reciting this verse, any person um, from the audience would be, um, would be in incentivized. They would be more encouraged to uh, reach to the Behish because the Behish and the paradise is the place where we are going to listen uh, the voice of, of God, uh, where he would be greeting us by the word Salah. So by giving all this example, he says like, you know, the word which is used in Surah Tulqat, Salam on here, is so deep that we won't be able to understand its full self. The best what we could do is like, you know, juxtapose all these meanings which are used in Islamic tradition and in, in, in different verses in, in our daily lives and try to make sense out of the word Salam, which is used in Surah Al-Qadr. از کنم چون وقت هم تمام شده با این توصیفات هنوز دو مورد دیگه هم از توصیفات لیلت القدر هست لیلت مبارکه فیه های اختر و کل امر حکیم در سوره دخانه سوره دیگری دیگه وقت نیست با این توصیفاتی که از شکب قدر شد که فقط آیات قرآن رو خوندیم و انسان واقعا پی به عظمت این شب و یک اصلا فوق اون تصوراتی که بشر میتونه انجام بده وقتی خدا به پیغمبر بفرم و ما ادراک ما لیلت القد ماها کاملا در این جهت آجزیم و لذا چون عمل در این شب هم این مقدار استحباب داره انواع اعمال مستحب در این شب وارد شده از نمازهای نافله که تا صدرکت هم گفته شده از قرائت قرآن شاید اشاره به این باشه که در شب قدر که قرآن از مقام بالا از اون حقایق حقایق وجودی عالی نازل شد شما هم قرآن بخوانید تا بریم بالا قرآن نزول داشت شما سعود داشته باشید شاید البته من روایتی تر تفسیر نیدم به این معنا این به ذهن خود بشری ما اینجوری و صدقه در این شب خیلی مستحبه افتار من در یه جلسه یه از کردم ما روایت داریم با عنوان افتار دادن به روز دیار و افتار در خانه برادر روزگی روزدار و افتار برادر در خانه شما این سه تا عنوان در مجموع وارد شده اون وقت تمام اعمال بر سله رحم در اون شب ثوابش مضاعفه به حسن و خلق در اون شب ثواب تمام اعمال بری که در زندگی انسان هست مثلا صدقت و سر تطف و غضب الرحم در اون شب این به درجات بسیار عالی متجلی میشه تمام اون حقایقی رو که در شریعت مقدس آمده عرض کردم اینجا از اون جایز که دیگه علم پید و فقط و تماما در اون شب به نحو اتم و اکمل تجلی پیدا خواهد بله در نکنیم من این تکی را هم ترجمه کنم این کنکلوزو ریمارک آیت الله مددی منشنز اباوت Um, uh, Layla Turkal is it's a lengthy topic. He says like it requires uh, much more uh, uh, time to, to expand on the details of Layla Turkal. In Surat Dukhan, um, he mentions uh, there is another verse uh, concerning Layla Turkal in which it is mentioned Layla Tul Mubaraka, the blessed night. Um, by the fact, by the virtue of how God is addressing his prophet, he uh, says like, you know, the, the merits of, of Layla Tulkad are far beyond our comprehension. Uh, there are many uh, amal and acts uh, which uh, we should be performing in this uh, blessed night. Uh, one is uh, Nafila prayers. Uh, Musa prayers, a recitation of Quran, um, uh, especially uh, Quran. He mentions Quran was revealed, right? Uh, in this um, uh, blessed night, what we can do is 
when Quran was revealed by recitation, we could elevate ourselves. So one is Nuzul revelation, and then we have elevation, which is like soul. Uh, however, he's very precocious. He mentions like he hasn't seen this in um, the verses, but uh, this is something which we human beings could uh, be able to deduce from this verse. So as if Quran is, is a, a, being revealed in this night uh, by recitation, by understanding, we could elevate our souls and, and make it reach to the highest um, levels. Um, the other things which are recommended are uh, to, to uh, giving iftari, to provide um, uh, the food to someone. Um, uh, there are like three uh, things uh, as far as iftari is concerned. Um, you could give iftari and then uh, specifically the second thing which is mentioned is like visiting someone's house for iftari or inviting someone um, uh, for iftari. Obviously, uh, he didn't mention, but I'm just um, yeah, using the privilege of being the host and moderator of this session. Uh, COVID rules and regulations needs to be followed as well. Uh, by the way, this uh, bracket and caveat was from me. Um, the other thing which you mentioned is like Silatul Rahim, visiting family members or like, you know, just giving, uh, I'm, again, I'm interpreting like, you know, uh, calling them in, in, in today's world, which we are leaving. Uh, sadaqah, uh, charity, a donation, giving arms, helping someone. And, and that also Sadaqah to Sir, like, you know, in, in hiding without um, uh, making it like, you know, open. Um, the, the, the realities and the essence of Sharia is something uh, which we should be focusing. Um, I mean, understanding the essence of the Sharia is something which should be focusing in uh, these uh, blessed nights, as Ayatollah Madhidi mentions. Uh, یه بحثی از که شاید بپرسند شب قدر یک امر واقعی است و اثر داره از کجا معلوم که مثلا این ماه رمضان واقعا ماه رمضان باشه این رو هم راهش اینه پیغمبر اکرم در سال دهم ده هجرت یعنی 1432 سال قبل در منا که خطبه خوندن این مطلب رو در اونجا فرمودن که زمان گشت چون جاهلیت زلهجه رو عوض میکنن جا به جان و الان زلهجه همون زلهجه است که خداوند در روز خلقت و آسمان و زمین خیلی عجیبه همون زلهجه است که در یه چیزی تقریبا 14 میلیارد سال در همون روز خلقت و آسمان و زمین خدا قرار داد اون وقت مسلمان ها از اون تاریخ تا الان سال, سال قمری ماه های قمری رو به همون زلهجه پیغمبر تنظیم کردن پس ما الان بعد از 1432 سال این ماه رمزان رو ما ماه رمزان میدونیم تطبیقش کردیم با اون زلهجه که پیغمبر فرموده در 1432 سال قبل پس از این جهت هم خیال ما راحت البته این احتیاج به شهر داره um, uh, towards the end, um, I mentioned like some of uh, you might ask about how do we know that the month of Ramadan is the month in which Laylatul Qadr is? Because if Laylatul Qadr is, is something um, which is a reality, is, is, a, is a real entity, then um, it could be in any uh, month or any night of, of the year. So he mentions like um, the Holy Prophet um, mentioned in uh, 1432 after Hijra. Uh, well, he, he mentioned on the 10th of Hijra. Um, the year 10 after Hijra, uh, in, in the famous sermon which he gave to the people in Mina, to his followers and his companions in, in, in Mina. So uh, in that sermon, he mentioned, uh, the Holy Prophet mentioned that this Zil Hijra, the Zil Hijra of the 10th after Hijra, is the same as Zil Hijra, which is the Zil Hijra in which the earth was created. And the earth came into existence. And that goes back to 15,000 billion years, as mentioned by Ayatollah Madadi. So after 1432, uh, so after 1,432 years, uh, we are uh, assured that this month uh, is the exact month. Because in the time of, of Jahili, in the time of like, you know, early Arabs, what they used to do is, uh, they used to change the month of Zilhijjah. They used to, uh, as like, you know, uh, 
this is what I'm I'm explaining uh, by the way using the bracket um, as we have leap year like um, so in, in in early days the Arabs used to um, uh, decrease some days from the Zilhijjah and they used to change the months but here uh, the prophet said like you know in the 10th of the Hijjah that's the same Zilhijjah so from that time onwards um, we have all the months intact, right? So after like 1,432 years, uh, they, they signed. And based on that, uh, we could say that, you know, the month of Ramadan and Layla Turkad is the one which we are uh, commemorating and, and we are engaging in performing our amals and, and supplications. Um, he says this requires uh, a detailed time to explain it, it, um, it, it further, but that could be, you know, kept it for uh, another session, another time. So um, we are uh, 11 minutes um, uh, more from our designated time. Uh, and, and in the remaining, like uh, almost 19 minutes, let's uh, start the question answer session. Uh, I would be, uh, I have received a couple of questions from uh, friends and uh, um, through uh, different groups, uh, as well as I can see some of the questions which are mentioned in the chat room as well. Uh, so I would mix and match uh, and ask Ayatollah Madhadi and, and request Ayatollah Madhadi for, um, for, for uh, explanation. So uh, what does Sayyid think about the authenticity of the narration alluding to each of uh, the three knights playing a role in destiny? I think this has been covered uh, in Ayatollah Madhadi's uh, time. However, I think uh, the, the, the emphasis on authenticity, which is um, in mentioned by in, in question two as well. So um, it's they, uh, this night which don't have an authentic chain. Does he believe they are still valuable or we should focus on authentic supplication? This is something which I would ask. وظیفه ما چیست نسبت به خواندن اون دعایی که معصور هست به اصطلاح و دعایی که سنددار نیستش اولا دعا مطلقا ولو بی سند هم باشه چون توجه قلبی انسان به خداست تاثیر خودش رو به اون جهات داره اما این مطلب که از کجا بدانیم الحمدلله فعلا خیلی آسانه مصادر غالبا موجوده و به راحتی میشه مراجعه کرد متخصصین و اهل فن تشخیص میدن که مثلا شواهد معید است که این دعا درسته شواهد معید است که این دعا مثلا شاید در سندش خدشه باشه خود دعای ابو حمزه سمادی دعای بسیار خوبیه دعای افتتاح منصوب است به نائب دوم حضرت بقیت الله در شبهای ماه رمضان نسبتا قابل قبوله این دعای افتتاح تاریخش به هزار سال قبله هزار و پنجاه سال قبل تقریبا به هزار و پنجاه سال قبل دعای ندبه که در روزهای جمعه خونده میشه اون هم نسبتا بد نیست اون هم به لحاظ تاریخی تا هزار و پنجاه سال قبل سابقه داره یعنی ما قدیب ترین مستری که داریم در حدود هزار و پنجاه سال قبله فعلا الحمدلله مسائل به است که اینها رو به راحتی میتونیم تشخیص بدیم ولیکن در شب قدر آیون دقت کنن همین دائما از غروب آفتاب از آن مغرب تا از آن صبح که روایت هم داره آیه این طور سلامون هیه حتی مطلع الفش تا از آن صبح خودشون با همون زبان خودشون در حال دعا باشن یعنی واقعا یه جوری است که هر ثانیه این شب قدر ارزش داره دعا بکنن برای خودشون برای خانوادهشون برای نسلشون برای آیندگانشون دعا بکنن برای گذشتگانشون برای توفیقات در دنیا رزق فراوان، رزق طیب، رزق طاهر، رزق حلال، زندگی خوب این دعا همیشه اثر خودش رو داره البته دعایی که محصوره و مخصوصا در روایت تأکید شده عین همون دعا اون رو کم و زیاد نکنیم اینها رو الان ما تا حد زیادی میتونیم تشخیص بدیم خیلی ممنون آجا این رفرنس تو آتنتیسیتی این ویچ دعا شد بی ریسایتر آتر مددی سیز لائک دعا این جنرل از ا پرنسپل ایت هایز از اون افکت بکاز ایت ایت سمتنگ ویچ کمز فرام هارت رایت بکاز اینی پرسن وود میک اینی دعا وود ریسایت سمتنگ ایز ریسایتی او شیز ریسایتنگ فرام دا هارت سو ایت هایز افکت 
However, uh, thinking about authenticity and like whether it contains a chain or it does not, uh, uh, that is something uh, which um, uh, those uh, who are, you know, scholars in this field, uh, um, uh, they are quite familiar with these uh, discourses. Uh, and it's, it's quite easy in these days because uh, we are much familiar with the sources of duas uh, and based on the evidence which uh, our, our ulama uh, examine uh, the, the, the various do us and it's, it's, it's not, uh, they would be able to, to make a decision about the authenticity or not. Um, give me examples of like, you know, authentic uh, uh, du'as. He says, uh, du'a Abu Hamda Tumali is, is an excellent um, uh, du'a, uh, which um, we could rely upon. Um, and then he mentions about du'a iftata. Du'a iftata is something which could be dated back to 1050 years. Um, so that is something which is attributed to the second um, naib and the sec second deputy of Imam al-Mahdi in minor occultation. So that is something uh, which is praiseworthy and uh, should could be taken into consideration as well, relatively, um, uh, which he used the word. Um, he, he says like Dua Nutba is, is another, obviously, it's on, uh, which is recited on, on the day of Friday. Again, um, it's uh, you could date back to 1050 years um, based on the, the sourcing, uh, which Ayatollah Madhadi uh, suggested. So the thing which we should be focusing, uh, Ayatollah Madhadi uh, is, is encouraging us is, that from sunset uh, till the morning, till the dawn, uh, we should be engaging ourselves in uh, connecting with God by whatever and whichever language you prefer to connect with him. Uh, all these things are desirable in this uh, blessed night. So the one might just make a dua of, of uh, halal sustenance, risk halal, uh, halal sustenance, um, health, and so on and so forth. So that is something which we should be focusing on. Um, the second question which I have received, uh, well, uh, there are others as well. I'm just skipping and, and uh thinking, uh, so just forgive me if I'm like missing your question. Um, what I have received is about uh, the importance of Laylatul Qadr and um, uh, Hazrat Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah Alayha. So that is something which we can discuss. Uh, um, so I will I'll pose the question to Atamada in Farsi. Haji ko is solid digi ki rasid has Rajibe Nisbate has a Zahra Saramullah Aleha wa Shabe Kad. Layla Tulkad here Fatima. Yaman Arafa Fatima, the Fagadara for Layla. They're in Jose Shonche Nazarati Doridwa, Dusan Mustakan Kim. But in Revoyat, Revoyat is Kidar Bazi as Kotub Omadim and Aroda and Yarif Layla Hazel Yarif Hazel Fatimism. In Serraj Zoheran Roshani, and he was so bad as your Helm Kaz Golova, and I know as Golovnisa. Un Serraj in a key. همچنان که عرض کردم شب قدر به عنوان قلب دوازده ماه یعنی این سی سد و پنجاه و چهار روز و سی سد و پنجاه و چهار شب رو به هم ربط میده استلاحا شب رمز برنامه ریزیه شب رمز اینه و روز بر اجرا کردن پیاده کردن یعنی برنامه در شب ریخته میشه و در روز اون پیاده میشه ولیزا در شب قدر هم نکته اینه تمام اون حوادثی که در سال هست این که در اون شبها باید برنامه باشه و در روزها پیاده بشه اینها در شب قدر معین میشه دقیق فرمودید وقت راجع به حضرت زهرا سلام الله علیه ها نکته همینه که حضرت تمام اون چرا که انبیاء الهی آوردن استلاحا انبیاء الهی به منزله تقنین یا برنامه ریزیه و اون چرا که بعد اوسیا و ائمه علیه السلام دارن که به منزله اجراس حضرت زهرا فاصله ما بین این دو تا هستن یعنی قلب این سیر تاریخی یعنی همچنان که لیلت القدر در عرض کردم در از روایت در میاد از مجموعه ها در 14 میلیارد سال از اول خلقت چون در خود قرآن داره فی کتاب الله یوم خلق است دوازده ماه در کتاب الله یعنی گاهی ممکن است که سوال بکنه من دیگه مطرح نکردم اگر آیه داره که یوم خلق از سماوات 
اگر اون وقت نه آسمان بوده نه زمین بوده نه خورشید بوده نه ماه بوده چطور ماه میگه دوازده ماه اینجا خود قرآن جواب میده فی کتاب الله کتاب الله یعنی برنامه کتاب الله نظام آفرینش یعنی خداوند متعال قبل از اینکه آسمان و زمین رو خلق کنه در نظام آفرینش این جور قرار داد که ماهای قمری دوازده تا باشن در اونها لیلت القدر باشه این لیلت القدر هم این آثار داشته باشه لذا این که پیغمبر فرمون زمان مثل همون وقتی است که خداوند خلق کرد پیغمبر کتاب الله رو خوندن رسول الله نظر به کتاب الله کردن نگین وقتی که خلق آسمان و زمین بود نه ماه بود نه زمین بود چطور میشه بگه پیغمبر که این زلهجه زلهجه این زلهجه زلهجه در کتاب الله پیغمبر نظر به کتاب الله فرموده در کتاب الله آمده که باید این مسئله به این صورت باشه شب قدر هم باشه پس بنابراین در نظام وجود از اصلش این طور بوده دوازده ماه باشه هر ماهی دارای یک اثر ماه رجب یک آثار داره ماه شعبان یک آثار داره ماه رمضان یک آثار داره ماه محرم ماه زلحجه قصد میفرمان علم اینها رو قبول نده اینها تماما وحی به ما نشونده علم در این جهت وارد نمیشه پس بنابراین ما در وجود یک مجموعه برای برنامه ریزی یک مجموعه برای اجرا در نظام تشریع هم همینطور انبیا در مقام تقنین هم صد و بیست و چهار هزار پیغمبر آمده هم تمام اون حقایق انبیا در رسول الله ایشان پدر حضرت هم و امیر المؤمن هم سید الوسیا هست شوهر حضرت تمام اوسیا و امه هم از نسل حضرت زهرا پس حضرت زهرا به منزله لیلت و قدره یعنی نظام تشریع از انبیا شروع میشه تا خاتم انبیا نظام اجرا و تنفیز و پیاده ساختن از امیر المؤمنین سید الاوسیا شروع میشه تا خاتم الاوسیا اونی که واسطه این قرار میگیره وجود حضرت زهرا سلام الله علیه هر که در روایات فراوانی داریم مثلا یک روایت داریم از زبان از زهرا از زهرا میگه خداوند ما رو خلق کرد قبل از خلق آسمان و زمین به دو هزار سال که این هم خیلی تعجبه که هنوز آسمان و زمین نبوده میگه دو هزار سال که خدا میدونه معنای دو هزار سال چیه در اون روایت از زبان حضرت زهراس هست اون روایت از زبان حضرت زهراس که ما مشغول تحمیل و تسبیح و تحلیل و تکبیر بودیم و بعد خدا برخ ولیزا میشه گفت که از مجموعه این روایات که وارد شده ما روایات چار هزار سال هم داریم هفت هزار سال هم دیدم چارده هزار سال هم دیدم دو میلیون سال هم دیدم در مجموعه خلق نور اهل بیت و بعضیاش از زبان خود هم. پس این مطلب مطلب خیلی بعیدی نیست و مطلب بسیار لطیفی است به نظر این مشکل خاصی خیلی ممنون آجا um the question uh, which was posed to Ayatollah Madadi uh, from one of our uh, viewers was concerning uh, Laylatul Qadr and um, uh, Bibi Fatima to Zahra Salamu uh, Alaiha. He says, yes, uh, there are certain reports uh, in relation to uh, connection between Laylatul Qadr and uh, Lady Fatima to Zahra Salamu Alaiha. Uh, and he says like, it's, it's uh, quite uh, justifiable. This connection is, is quite um, evident. Um, some people and, and some um, uh, would argue that, you know, such connections are um, somehow related to hulu and exaggeration, uh, thinking highly of imams and, and um, uh, or equating beyond what we should be doing. But he says, no, this is not hulu. This is not something uh, one would uh, classify this as, as, as hulu. Um, and then he gives the explanation behind this connection. He says, uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, there are 12 months uh, as far as the like, lunar calendar is, is concerned and then what Quran mentions. And the heart of these uh, 12 months is uh, Laylatul Qad. So there are 354 days as far as lunar calendar is concerned, 354 days and 354 nights. One thing which connects 
the entire 12 um, months or like 354 days and 354 nights is Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr is um, the medium, is the connector between these uh, days and nights. How this work, he says, night is understood to be uh, the time in which one plans something. And day is understood to be a thing where uh, one would execute uh, the planning. So this is how days and night would work. So uh, uh, in reference to Laylatul Qad, uh, Laylatul Qad is the night in which uh, the planning and, the, uh, and everything is decreed. The execution of this planning is going to occur in um, the remaining days of, uh, of, of non-Laylatul Qad days and night. Uh, that, as far as Laylatul Qadr is concerned. Now, coming to Lady Fatima to Zahra Salamu um, uh, we should be focusing on the prophets and uh, then imams. So the task of prophet is something to do with uh, managing the affairs or um, giving us guidance about like what to do and, 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 and the oral planning. So the planning is left to the prophets, to 124,000 prophets. The execution of these uh, plannings is delegated to the imams. So uh, the prophets are those who would plan, imams are those who would execute. Same as we saw in Laylatul Qadr, um, uh, that uh, day, uh, nights are for planning, uh, and then uh, days are for uh, executing. So between days and night, Laylatul Qadr was the medium because Laylatul Qadr connects those days and nights. In the same pattern, the connectivity between the planning of the Prophet and the execution of the Imams is Lady Fatima Zahra, Salamu She is the one who connects uh, both uh, these um, Prophets and uh, the Imams. How? Uh, because she is the daughter of the, 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 the best of the prophets, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and she is the wife of Imam Ali alayhi sallam, the first Imam. So she plays the role of connectivity between these two streams of prophets and Imam. So uh, let me summarize because this was like, you know, he explained it in much detail. I don't want to uh, do injustice to what he has uh, discussed. Um, he says, Days are uh, nights are for planning, days are for execution. Laylatul Qadr is the connectivity between nights and days. In the same manner, uh, prophets are the planners, imams are the executioners. Um, the connectivity between uh, prophets and the imams are, is uh, Lady Fatima to Zahra, Salamu Alaiha. Um, one should not think of like uh, how we discuss about Laylatul Qadr and Lady Fatima to Zahra and this connectivity and so on and so forth uh, and how it, it matches because in, in, um, in uh, when uh, God decreed about Laylatul Qadr, there were no like heavens, I mean, uh, skies and there were no earth, there were no sun and moon. How this Laylatul Qadr, how this concept would, uh, the concept of 12th month would um, occur. And here he goes back to the earlier uh, disc discourse which he had. Uh, he mentions um, the Quran is very specifically and categorically mentioned. This is in the book of God. It's not what science says. This is something uh, metaphysical. This is something, um, uh, as he uses the Nizam of Rinesh, um, the, 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 the connection and uh, the creation of, of uh, the, the universe. So in, in that framework of God, um, this is something how um, uh, the 12 months in Laylatul Qadr would occur. And, and we all know, as he mentioned, um, that, that, you know, the Noor of Imams were connected and, and created far beyond what we might think of months and days. He says he has seen uh, reports which mention 7,000 years, 2 million years, 14,000 years, and so on and so forth. So that's uh, what he mentioned. I think uh, we have some, um, um, I, I read a message, we say we can go 15 more minutes. Uh, I understand uh, um, that, you know, beyond when our time is was supposed to end. So our time is going to end in one minute, but uh, I, I, I see that this uh, discussion is generating more and more interest. Uh, if I have not misunderstood this comment, I would continue for another 15 minutes before we wrap. But before that, let me 
um, give this question and take permission of Ayatollah Madhadi, I would do it uh, both together. So the next question goes um, um, in reference to um, uh, the amal of Quran and, and what is the significance and, and the philosophy of putting Quran on, on the head. Um, uh, نه اشکال نداره من وقت دارم بفرمایید حال دارم امشب حال من خوبه <تصفيق> خیلی ممنون راجب خیلی ممنون حال من خوبه لطفا بپرسید بفرمایید بله سوالی که رسید از راجب فلسفه به سر گرفتن قرآن چیز به نظر شما چرا سرها را بالای سر میذاریم و قسم میدیم به اولیا این مسئله یه قرآن سر گرفتن هم خودش یه دعا یه کیفیت دعای مستقل شب های دیگه هم میشه هم اون دو اینا اصلا دو تا مراسم هم اشتباه گاهی خیال یه مراسم اینه که انسان قرآن رو باز بکنه در مقابل خدا و به اون قرآن قسم بده یک قسمت دیگه این است که یک عمل دیگریه این یک مستحب به دیگریه که قرآن رو روی سر بگیره این به عنوان این بوده که مثلا یک نمادی عملی باشه یک صورت فیزیکی باشه از توجه ما به قرآن و اهل بیت لذا این قرآن رو به سر میگیره و این دعا این طوریه. اول خدا رو به اسماع خودش قسم میده بعد به یکی یکی از چارده معصوم این با بای قسمه الهی به محمده قسم میده به رسول الله بعد قسم میده به امیر المومنین قسم به حضرت زهرا تا بقیت الله این خودش یه عمل مستقلی هم هست در بعض از روایات مستقلا آمده در بعض از روایات هم در شب قدر آمده یک عمل مستقلی است فلسفه خاصی مثل بقیه دعا هست این یک نحوه دعایی است که در مقابل خدا قرآن و اهل بیت رو واسه قرار میده برای اینکه حاجات خودش رو برآورده بکنه و اختصاص به شب قدر نداره لکن در شب قدر هم وارد شده هر وقت سال شب جمعه شب های دیگه بخواد این ترتیب هم انجام بده این عمل خودش مستحب خیلی ممنون آجو um, in, in reference to the question which we asked about like what's the purpose and philosophy of putting Quran on head uh, in, in these uh, nights of, of Qadr um, Adul Madadi um, uh, is, is uh, mentioning that uh, this is not something restricted or like you know specific to Laylatul Qadr uh, one could perform uh, this particular act in other nights as well Um, the second thing which he notes uh, is uh, these are two different uh, amal. One is like, you know, opening the Quran, looking at Quran and reciting uh, what we do in, in, in Layla Turka. That's one thing. And that is separate from the other amal, which is, you know, they're putting Quran on the head. Uh, so these are like two different things. Uh, normally, like, you know, in our community, we do it together thinking this is like, you know, one thing in, in combination. He says, no, these are like two different uh, amal um, and two different things, which could be done uh, in um, other nights as well. Um, so uh, we could think of uh, putting Quran on head in the context of uh, A, a, a symbolic idea, all right? Like as if I want to be under the guidance of Quran. So it has a symbolic meaning behind this gesture as well. And when we recite, uh, what we mean is this bay would mean uh, the qasam, like, you know, we are asking God um, uh, and, and asking uh, God uh, through the intercession of, uh, of our imams and ma'asumin alayhi salatu wa salam. Um, he says like it's not restricted to Shabai Qadr, uh, Laylatul Qadr. One could, you know, uh, seek their uh, hajat uh, and whatever they want to ask in other nights as well. For example, like, you know, in, 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 in Shabai Juma, in the night of, of uh, Thursday, one could still uh, engage in uh, this amal as well. Um, the other question which I have is uh, concerning uh, uh, why one should be, why it is emphasized to pray uh, for uh, Imam Al-Mahdi Sharif in this uh, blessed nights. Um, um, uh, 
خب عرض کردم چون شب قدر یک شب استثنایی است در طول سال مهمترین مطالب رو در همون شب به اصلا تقاضا میکنم در ماه رمزان کل ماه رمزان ماه برکت و رحمت و مغفرت این دعای افتتاح اگر آقایون مایل باشین یک شبی من مخصوص این صحبت کنم دعای افتتاح یه رابطه خاصی با خود بقیت الله داره حالا غیر از دعای فرج دعای افتتاح بیشتر رابطه داره تا دعای فرج یعنی دعای افتتاح سه بخش اولش هم دو بعضی دعا هاست بعد صلوات بر معصومین قسمت آخرش هم توجه به بقیت الله نه فقط توسل یعنی خودش رو در معرض بقیت الله قرار بده ارتباط روحی و معنوی و واقعیش رو با بقیت الله قرار بده این از خصائص دعای افتتاح اگر مایل باشند میتونند یک شبیه راجع به این صحبت جداگانه داشته باشیم و چون در شب قدر عالی ترین مطالب از چون شب استثنایی در طی تمام سال لذا مهمترین مطالب از خداوند متعال تقاضا میشه که طبعا در روی تفکرات ما روی تفکرات شیعه بلکه روی تفکرات اسلامی ها حفظل و اعمال امتی انتظار الفرج انشاءالله تعالی ظهور بقیت الله جزء اساسی ترین دعاهای ما در اون شب باشه خیلی ممنون آجو این رفرنس تو لیلت القدر اند امام المهدی اجل الله تعالی فرج و شیف وای دو فرج از سمتنگ ویچ از انکریج تو ریسایت این دیس بلسد نایت سایت المهدی منشنس دیت بکاز آف دی سگنفکس اند دی مریس ویچ دیس بلسد نایت هولد and and for that reason we are encouraged for reciting this uh, words in general the month of ramadan is um, very much uh, praiseworthy valuable where our duas and hajat are accepted so this is the best month where we could pray for the safety and aman of imam al mahdi jalalahu taala farij al sharif um, however he mentions uh, dua iftita holds great significance in these and nights uh, then we should be uh, engaging in in dua iftita and dua iftita could be uh, divided into three parts number one um uh, praising uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the first part of of dua iftita the second one is about the salawat and and salutation to masumin ali musaddu i mean the third one is connecting to Uh, our beloved imam of our time so that's um, the three uh, parts and and he says like this requires a lengthy um, explanation and commentary and he is ready to explain in another session um, uh, in 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 nutshell he says um connecting with with uh, with the imam in this blessed night is something uh, which we have been advised um uh, intizarul faraj uh, 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 waiting uh, for the reappearance of, of of our imam and praying for uh, hastening his reappearance that is something which is uh, of utmost importance and something which we could engage in this uh, blessed night uh, the next question which i have in this uh, remaining uh, seven minutes is uh, uh, about um, Laylatul Qad. So for example, the question which I've received is if someone um, based on uh, their marja, they are having, uh, they, are, they, are, they are commemorating Laylatul Qad tonight and someone else on the other night, uh, how this work uh, in the planning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hajo Sali ke rasidas nisbat be شبقات میگه طب کے نظرات مختلف و رؤیت حلال برخیا امشب مثلا شبقات احیا میکنن شبقات میگیرن برخی مثلا فردا شب میگه این تفاوتی خواهد داشت یا فکر کنم سوالش اینه که این امر حقیقی از یا امر اعتباری لیلا طول قضا امر حقیقی است لیکن به سر اینه برای اول ما یک نظر هست که با محاسبات نجومی حساب بکنیم که یک حساب معین است یک حساب هست که با رؤیت با چشم بگیم در دنیا الان کشور چین ماه قمری داره سال قمری اونا با محاسبات حساب میکنن و لذا اون هیچ اختلاف نداره در دنیای اسلام چون پیغمبر فرمودن سمل رؤیه با رؤیت حساب میکنن وقت طبق این برنامه لیلت القدر هم طبق همین رؤیت خواهد شد 
البته رؤیت با محاسبات اختلاف داره دو تا, رو دو تا شب نیست ما الان یه مشکلات سر نظرات شخصی مطرحه بلا لیلت القعد یه امر واقعی است و میتواند دنیای اسلام کاری کنه که در این جهت به یک وحدت عمل برسه توضیحش طولانی است احتیاج به بحث طولانی داره اما به هر حال دو تا لیلت القدر نیست طبق محاسبات شب 21 کم یک حسابی داره طبق رؤیت شب 21 کم حساب دیگری داره اینا با همدیگه یک مقدار اختلاف اما با اما طبق نظر رسول الله نیست طبق نظر رسول الله همون رؤیت البته هستن ایده از علمای اسلام همین الان هم هستن سابقا هم بودن اونا گفتن اعتبار به محاسبات این اختلاف فتواست نه اینکه واقعا شب قدر دو تاست شب قدر یک امر واقعی است و حقیقی است و تابع رؤیته که پیغمبر فرمود خیلی ممنون جو این رفرنس تو لیلۃ القدر بینگ وان اور لایک دیفرنت بیکاز سم اف دم از ای سید لایک یو نو دی مایت بی دوئینگ دیر اعمال اند اند دی مایت بی هاوینگ دیر لیلۃ القدر ٹو نائٹ اند دی ادرز وود ہیو دی ادر نائٹ سو ہاؤ اٹ وود ورک ایز فار ایز لیلۃ القدر ایز کنسرن سو اتر مددی منشنز ہی سیز لیلۃ القدر ایز ون سنگل انٹیٹی ون سنگل نائٹ اٹ ایز نوٹ لائک ٹو اور تھری نائٹس ایز ایز جس ون نائٹ um as far as uh, which night is there uh, which night laylatul qadr would be there um, uh, um he says there are two uh, sort of uh, uh, two kinds of calculation no not calculation two kinds of uh, opinions as far as um, uh, discerning um, the month of uh, the lunar month is concerned um uh, he says the one being based on calculation uh, for example he says um people in china they uh, they have their affairs running as far as lunar calendar but uh, they go uh, not based on sighting moon rather they have calculations and so for example for, for that reason it won't change it's, it's a fixed calendar despite the fact it is lunar calendar but it's fixed uh, because of the calculations which they do and they go as uh, as per calculation the second opinion is um going uh, based on the royat and 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 sighting the moon and because of the sighting of the moon um the, there are different fatwas and because of different fatwas uh, we end up having different nights he says um a muslim community uh, there is a scope of unity of the entire muslim community and muslim umma uh, in which we all can have uh, you know a common understanding one understanding about uh, this um, Uh, of 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 uh, of of uh, discerning the first month of lunar calendar is concerned so but that requires a lengthy discussion which we can have at some uh, later stage uh, i have literally two minutes left and i would ask the last question about joshin kabir haji ko sawal akhir rajib joshin kabir nazar shuma rajib sanad va khandan joshin kabir dar in maah chitor hastash راجب به سند الان حضور ذهن ندارم یعنی مرحوم حاجم الله هادی سبزواری جل کتاب اصلا در شرح این حدیث نوشته و من دیدم قسمت های زیادی لیکن الان حضور ذهن ندارم و جوشن کبیر صد قسمت هر قسمتی ده تا اسم یا ده تا صفت از صفات الهی است دعا بسیار دعای قشنگیه یعنی در زیبایی دعا و در متانت الفاظ دعا جای بحث نیز از کردم بعضی از این علمای ما اصلا یک جل کتاب نسبتا قطور در شرح این نوشتن خود من هم قسمت های شاید معتنابهش دیدم اما الان در ذهن من حضور ذهن راجع به سند ندارم و من کاملا در این مسائل احتیاط میکنم نه من اصلا شعن علما این است که در مسائلی که مربوط به شریعت میشه کاملا احتیاط بکنم اما دعا بسیار دعای زیبا و قشنگ و مورد قبول عامه شیعه هم هست اصطلاحا میگن اگر یک چیزی در جامعه شیعه را افتاد و معروف شد این مثلا ارزش خاصی داره مرحوم شیخ اسدالله توستری که از علمای بزرگ ماست کتابی به نام کشف القناع داره در باب اجماع ایشون در آخرای کتابی مطلب لطیفی رو داره ایشون میگه بعید نیست اگر بعضی چیزها بین شیعه کاملا رواج پیدا کرد 
و نگاه کردیم مستر درستی نداشت این از طرف بقیت الله باشه این استظهار ایشان ایشان یکی از علمای بسیار بزرگ ماست و مثل همین حدیث کسا البته برای او سندی ذکر شده اما خب خیلی اما انصافا مثل حدیث کسا مثل دعای توسل مثل جوشن کبیر اینها عدیه هستن که فوق العاده در جامعه شیعه جا باز کردن لذا به ذهن من هم میاد حرف ایشان اجمالا بد نباشه من آدرس دادم ایشون از بزرگان علما است مرد بسیار بزرگواریز مرد بسیار عالمی است و مظهر زهد و تقوا و علم و فقاهت و اصول و, و بسیار کتاب خوبی هم نوشته کشف الغنا ایشون میگه بعید نیست این جور چیزها که این طور به صورت غیر طبیعی بین تمام شیعه رواج پیدا میکنه و وقتی وارد بحث علمی میشیم چندان مثلا اساس خیلی دقیق نمیبینیم یا مثلا اصلا نداره مثلا فرض کنیم از سال 500 سال قبل تا حالا متعارف شده بعید نیست که اینها به عنایت بقیه الله باشه اجمالا حرف بدی نیست فعلا سند دعا در ذهن من نیست اما دعا دعای خوبی Um, in reference to Joe Shankabir, I know we are running uh, over time. I would just uh, give the summary and we would end the session over here. So in reference to the son of Joe Shankabir, he says um, his, um, uh, uh, he, he doesn't recall uh, the proper son of Joe Shankabir at this moment, uh, but uh, there are books written on this. Uh, there is a commentary written on Joe Shankabir by Mullah Hadi Sabzwari. Um, and uh, he explains how important it is. Uh, then he says, um, one of our scholars, Asadullah Tussari, Sheikh Asadullah Tussari, um, in his book, Kashf al Qaina and Wujuh Hujiyat al Ijma, which is a, a fantastic uh, work uh, on um, the concept of, on the idea of, of a consensus, um, he Uh, the author mentions a beautiful thing towards the end of his book. He says like, if uh, something is widely circulated in she community, um, uh, one might want to think that uh, that has been circulated under the, the supervision and under the blessings of our beloved Imam Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farjoo Sharif. And by uh, that reason, uh, we would be able to, uh, you know, encourage people uh, reading it. Uh, Um, the other example he gives, like, you know, Hadith Sekisa, um, there might not be, you know, authentic chains, but he says, like, there, 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 is, uh, there is chain uh, discussed about, like, Hadith Sekisa, uh, irrespective of whatever the conclusion might be. Um, it is widespread among Shi community, and that should be by the blessings of Imam al Mahdi Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajim Sharif. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you uh, for uh, being with us in this session, um, especially to the organizers um, and, and uh, who, are, who are providing technical support. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of them in abundance, inshallah ta'ala. Um, I would conclude this by thanking Adil Madadi in Farsi. Ajaka Dastishma Darna Kuna Khili Khili Safadi Kadim, Dusan Khili Ashuma Tashakur or Kadar Dani. Yeah, no, Kiro Tuzi Vedam Gohi Yak Hadis Yos Doat Sanad Dore Ammo Khili Wazeh Nis. Thank you again. Masa Hadis Kesa Sanad Dore Ammo Khili Wazeh Nis. Yo Bazi Chizha Sanad Nazaran. Ishum Yak Baid Nis in Ha as in Shaib and Amre Bariatullah. من که سند نداره من اسم حدیث کسا بردم سند داره اما ممکنه خیلی واضح نباشه مراد ما این اون علما شعنشون اینه که دقیقا امور رو بررسی کنن امور شریعت فوق العاده با دقت اینها رو بررسی میکنن Out of his precaution, Ayatul Madadi, as I, I know him um, and many of like, you know, students know him, um, they're very extremely particular. And like, you know, for that reason, he wanted to um, uh, say that, you know, when he says um, uh, about the Sanad of like Hadith Sekisa, he says some of them, they would have Sanad, but the Sanad would be obscure. It might not be very much clear. So about like Hadith Sekisa, There is Sanat, but the Sanat is not uh, quite clear. But irrespective, as I said, irrespective of like uh, one would uh, get into the details of like Sanat, uh, uh, what he mentioned is, is uh, uh, from Sheikh Asadullah Tussari that uh, the blessings are from Imam al Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala for Jewish. Are you the Sishma Dana Kuna Khili Khili as a Tashakur Darim, Dusanam Salami Rasunan, as a Tashakur Daran, Dora Khatmukunit Ba? 
اللهم صل على محمد و آل محمد از کردن در کتاب مرحوم شیخ توسی سلوات رو به این ترتیب نوشته اللهم صل على محمد و آل محمد و عجل فرجهم و اهلک اعداءهم من الجن و الانس من الاولین و الاخرین خداوند متعال انشاءالله انایات خاصه خودش انایات بقیت الله رو شامل حال این بنده و همه دوستان همه عزیزان انشاءالله بگرد شب مبارکه یکی خواهد آمد لیلت القدر چه فردا شب چه دو شب بعد انشاءالله منشأ این باشه که خداوند توفیق بده از تمام لحظه های این شب مبارک شب بزرگ شب عظیم استفاده بشه خداوند خیر دنیا و آخرت رو نصیب همه عزیزان نصیب خانواده هاشون نصیب فرزندانشون نصیب آشناهاشون نصیب تمام نسل و ذریهشون بگن خداوند متعال گذشتگان اموات کسانی که سالهای قبل بودن و امسال نیستن و اموات سابق رو خوب انسان حتی اجداد خودش رو هم در نظر داشته باشه حتی اجدادی که چند واسه دارن مادام در زندگی دنیاست برای اونها دعا بکنه و تمام اینها برای اونها منشأ کمال و ذخیره خواهد خداوند همشون رحمت کنه و مشمول انایات خاصه خودش قرار بده خداوند متعال اون چه خیر دنیا خیر آخرت اون چه عمل صالح نصیب بندگان صالح خودش انبیا و شهدا صدیقین اولیاء الله فرموده است نصیب عزیزان بکنه و اون چه بدی و اعمال غیر مناسب رو از دامن این بزرگان دور کرده انشالله از دامن عزیزان دور بکنه انشالله خداوند متعال این نعمت رو در دنیا بده که لیاقت تشرف به خدمت حضرت بقیت الله الاعظم داشته باشه در این ماه رمضان به برکت دعای افتتاح ارتباط ما رو با حضرت بقیت الله کاملا قوی و محکم بدار و انشالله تعالی در زندگی ما در برزخ ما در قیامت ما هیچگاه از قرآن و اطرت جدا نشد السلام علیکم و رحمت الله و برکاته اللهم صلی اللہ علیه و محمد